Hello and welcome back to our Berserker playthrough and as you can see my army is now doing quite nicely. We still have a little bit of army capacity. I'm not sure whether that's just because we should probably keep some just in case for rescued prisoners. I don't know whether that's actually even useful at this point considering we have so many really good custom units to look out for and uh, try to level up. Speaking of leveling up, we're just going to level up these 15 troops right here. I'm currently doing something which I think is one of the most efficient ways, at least for me at the moment, to level up my forces and to also level up my roguery skill. And that is basically taking a quest that forces me to kill brigands in and around this area of this village. I, I personally feel like this is very, very useful because you could see here they just run along. And they're so easy to, to catch up to because obviously they just stand there for a few moments allowing you to catch up without any difficulties whatsoever. And then they also have this, the, uh, the armor donation thing, which makes even more of an opportunity out of this whole thing. So I, I've basically been doing this for the whole time that I've been standing here next to this village and it has gone swimmingly. I don't know whether you've noticed how many units I even have in my prisoner's hold, but I have 125 now, which is pretty amazing. And we've also completed that task. I don't really care about the completion of the task or anything like that. It's basically just to make it so that looters and various other types of bandit go over there. That's basically it. That's the only reason why I want that. Anyway, the Southern Empire, okay? <laughs> Oh dear. Oh yes. Wait until you hear about this. Okay, so the Southern Empire. They've broken off our... Um, <laughs> yes, they did. Mm -hmm. They broke off our alliance. And they ended up taking Onira away from the Kuzate. So, yeah. They basically decided, hey, we're not going to help you to defend against the overwhelming might of the Kuzate. And instead, we're just going to wait until it gets taken. And then we're going to take it back ourselves. That's what they did. And now they are, well, pretty strong, as you can quite clearly tell. They have 5,000 combat strength. The Kuzate have 3,700, so they obviously have a lot less. And the Azurai has a little bit less as well. Now, they're both at war against the, against the Southern Empire. And we have a non-aggression treaty at the moment with the Azurai. So obviously it's a good idea to just leave them well alone. Oh, it seems like we have a non-aggression pact with the Kuzate as well. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to just take a quick look through the stats here. Ah, the Western Empire might be someone that we might want to attack. Batanians, we might want to attack. Sturgia is looking pretty strong right now, actually. So Batania or the Western Empire. Are they at war against anyone at the moment? Yes, the Western Empire is at war against the Northern Empire. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Otherwise, we also have Batania. They're at war against Vlandia, but they have an alliance with Sturgia. So I don't really want to annoy the Sturgeons. So it looks to me like the Western Empire will be the people that we'll attack in just a second. But what I need to do is I need to figure out exactly which town we want to take. If we even want to take a town at this point. Because I'm thinking to myself, maybe it's a good idea for us not to take a town, and maybe it's a better idea to take something else. And I'm talking about mostly... Um, a castle or something along those lines because if we were to take a castle that would be a lot easier to take but it would also give us an opportunity to lay in some kind of distraction and bear in mind that obviously we have Neeson he's running around at the moment I don't know where he is he's patrolling around Poros not entirely sure why he's patrolling around Poros right now I have no idea what kind of Ah, he has... Oh, that's pretty good. Look at that. He has 127 out of 128 in terms of his party size. And you can even see what he has here. He has 43 Berserkers, if you can believe it. Yeah, he's looking pretty good right there. He does have a bunch of looters for some reason in his army. I'm not entirely sure why he has those. But okay. Anyway, yeah. This seems pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I think the best place to start our kingdom would probably be Thorios Castle. It has 248 units there, but the majority are militia, so we shouldn't have to really worry about anything too dramatic there. Now, the only other place that we could go is we could go to Onika Castle and then attempt to take Zionica itself. So, 
I don't know how many units they have at Onika Castle here. I mean, that's the point. That uh, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like this might be cool because then we could potentially um, launch an attack against Amatatus here. But as you can see, they do have 501. But what kind of units do they have here? As you can see, mostly lower tier units. Nothing that is really going to provide us with a big amount of resistance. And bear in mind that obviously I'm going to be asking Neeson to join me in my efforts because he has a pretty significant party size now and he has a good party at that. He hasn't gotten terrible units with the exception of those five looters. So I'm thinking we're probably going to call for an army here. He's going to come along and then we're going to have a maximum uh, maximum army strength of around 800 I think which is pretty good in my opinion. I think that's pretty nice right? I think so. Anyway, he's going to come along here and uh, then hopefully we'll have a decent amount of units leveled up as well. I mean, I do have a lot of tier 2 units, as you can see, and tier 3 units. But I have a massive amount of tier 5s in, in the form of the Berserkers, of course, where I have over 120 of those guys. So we really shouldn't have too many difficulties. But I guess this is a bit of a... Um, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a long shot because, as you can see, we have an army over there from the Western Empire. They're probably going to want to stop us from uh, doing something. Come on, Neeson. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to attack this caravan if we... Okay, apparently not. <laughs> no, we're not going to attack that caravan, apparently. No, we're just going to wait here by the town, and then I'm going to go for Thorios Castle almost immediately okay let's should we attack this guy i don't really want to attack a vassal to be honest i think attacking a vassal is way too uh, you know it's a little bit on the uh, uh on the risky side of things shall we say anyway uh yes let's do this there we go all right so we're basically just going to auto resolve with this guy because i really want to get this done i want to get this particular fight with him over and done with and now we are also going to be able to leave uh, leave here with a lot of experience, which is obviously going to catapult a couple of other our other people into decent tiers. And now we're going to go over to Thorios Castle and try and take that instantly. Now, I'm not going to auto-resolve this, obviously. I mean, you know, auto-resolving a siege at this point is probably not the best idea. I am actually going to save just in case we have a bit of a problem. And, oh, they made peace. Okay, yeah, we forced the Western Empire. Look at this. We forced the Western Empire into a peace agreement here. And now they are only at war against us. But look, look at their combat strength. Their combat strength is super low right now. Why is their combat strength so low? I'm not entirely sure. I can't zoom all the way out, unfortunately, when I'm in a siege. Which, I have no idea why that is even the case, to be honest. I should be able to zoom out the entirety of the map and move it around wherever I want, but the developers decided that that would not be, uh, you know, something that the player should be able to do. Anyway, we are just going to go in. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we're going to have the ladders. Obviously, we're going to have the siege ladders that we're going to be able to um, climb up, and we're going to be able to murder everyone inside, or at least I will attempt to do so as fast as possible. And I'm just hopeful that we will not lose too many units from the bombardment of the opponent's siege equipment because if that does happen then obviously we might have a couple of problems there we might have the unfortunate um <laughs> uh, the unfortunate circumstance where a bunch of our people get eliminated at once and that can happen multiple times so hopefully that's not going to happen this time all right here we go I'm I, I'm kind of I'm kind of optimistic about this mainly because we've already taken a look at what kind of units they have in the garrison here, and for me personally, I don't think there are any units that can really pose too much of a threat. <laughs> that guy, he had no idea what was about to um, <laughs> what was about to beset him. Yes, that was that was very very nice. Anyway, yes, we are suffering a couple of casualties but we shouldn't oh a noble super bear really are you serious where are all of these units ending up dying by the way seems like the other side of the wall yeah that seems to be the case i'm alive though still and i am the one providing medicine 
skill to my entire to my entire army, so I'm not entirely sure why we are losing units when I have 150? Don't I have 150 in medicine or something like that? Anyway, there's another slash. Oh yeah, let's take out some of these guys. We want them to run away as fast as possible, basically. That is our main goal here, to get the enemy. Where, where did they go? What? Oh, they went. Oh, they went that way. I had no idea that there was another exit. Wow, I'm an imbecile. Okay. Well, whatever the case, let's murder. Let's murder as many people as I can as they walk by here. This is basically the best thing I can do right now. And as I said, to try and force the opponent into some kind of retreat action, that is the one thing we want to do. We want to force them into that as fast as possible. Because if we don't do that, that's going to result in a lot of extra casualties on our side. And we obviously want to, well, we want to stop that as fast as possible. So let's just see if we can do it. I mean, so far I'm not doing too badly and I'm getting quite a few kills here, as you can quite clearly tell. And it seems like some of them are actually retreating, but I, I don't know whether they are actually running away or whether they're just uh, strategically retreating, shall we say. It seems like they are retreating, actually. We don't seem to be losing too many units along the way here. That was a double kill as well. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to go and switch to my one-handed sword now because I'd like to level that up a little bit. Oh, as you could see, it is so incredibly weak in comparison to the two-handed, as you would expect, of course. I think that's actually it. Let's zoom it. Oh, we've got a couple more people coming around here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's kill them. Kill them all. There we go. Get that speed bonus as well. Bear in mind that obviously the speed bonus is still pretty effective at getting one hit kills. And that's all I really want to try and do. Especially with the one handed. Don't really want to be, you know, hitting one guy five or six times. That's really going to waste a lot of kill potential. But it seems like maybe that's how it's going to have to be for this guy. Can we get him? Yes, we can. Very nice indeed. Okay, I'm almost 300 in one-handed as well, which is pretty nice. And I believe that is indeed the end of the siege. We just need to kill a couple more and that will be it. Okay, so we lost 22 units. Hmm. Eh, hmm. I'm not entirely sure about that, to be honest. I'm not, uh, not feeling great about that particular... Victory. I was hopeful for many less casualties, if I'm honest. But uh, sometimes you can't do much about it, unfortunately. Yeah, it's really kind of harsh. Oh, well, never mind. Let's just take as many, un uh, as many units. Let's just take as much uh, loot as we possibly can and then donate the rest. Going to show mercy to the castle here. And then we're just going to do improved garrison. We're going to just do the same old thing. I'm going to go for... We're, we're, let's, let's just go for maximum maximum people here because these guys are way way harsh at least i think they're going to come down on us really hard with a massive army and we really don't want that to happen so let's just try and um, fix up the walls i guess i mean that seems to be what they're already doing and the loyalty of course we're going to need to manage the castle so what what is this is this an empire thief i would assume it is an empire thief so we're going to give him uh give delta delta sauce delta sauce if that's his name we're going to make him the governor of this one. Okay, Delta Deltasos of the Bear Tilt. Yes, he is an empire culture. And Thorios Castle is also here. And he is, and that is a culture. Yeah, that, okay, that is an empire culture. Fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are literally just going to wait here for some time. And we're going to see what happens, because obviously I don't want to rush into another siege when my forces are still injured and when they are still requiring a little bit of a little bit of rest. Because if I do that, then we're rushing into something that is going to be a foregone conclusion of us losing, and then we're just going to lose another and another and another thief. And we really do not want that to be the case. So that's why I'm doing that. And let's just have a quick look here. Okay... I'm thinking, hmm, 
What am I thinking right now? I'm not entirely sure. I would like to take this. But do you think we can? Do you think we can take this? I think it's possible. <sighs> I don't know. I think it's possible, but it's definitely going to be difficult. Let's try it out and see what... Ha oh, I mean, look at that. Look at that insane... You know what? I don't think it... I don't think I can do this without sustaining massive casualties. Do you think so? I don't think I can do it. I'm actually going to leave it for the moment. I was actually partially hoping that we would be able to launch an attack from Thorios Castle without too many difficulties. As you can see, this is what I'm hoping for right here. This is the leader of the Western Empire. If he begins a siege here, he didn't. Look at that. He knows. He knows we're very strong here. He knows we are very strong, and so he is being extremely cautious about what he decides to do against us, which I, I gotta say, I don't blame him. I don't blame him for that. I think that's extremely smart of him to do that. And maybe he's going to go in now when I've left. That would be smarter of him, to be honest. Anyway, what I'm going to do... Yep, there we go. There he is. Oh, you. You see this guy? This guy is an absolute scoundrel. He knew that I left. And then as soon as... I literally went around the corner. I literally went around the corner. And then all of a sudden, he's right there to you know, besiege the, uh, besiege the thief. That is extremely irritating. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> ah, yes. Two can play at that game, sir. Two can play at that game. I'm going to besiege this. Yes. Yeah, I, even if I don't go through with this, it doesn't matter. Do you think I can take this? Do you think I can actually take this? I, you know, I, I don't think I can, to be honest. <sighs> okay, you know, I thought he would actually give up because, let's face it, I'm not going to be able to get in there at the best of times anyway. But I guess we might as well just do a large siege battle. I mean, I mean a large field battle instead. So here we go. This is a very even fight in terms of combat strength at the very least. And I was actually going to say that I was going to let Neeson run around and try and recruit more units because at the moment, now we're in a situation where it's going to be a bit dicey. All right, here we go. Oh, our combat strength is actually not as bad as I thought. It seems okay at the moment, as you can see. We seem to be a little bit, you know, a little bit on the winning side of things. Forward! All right, so we got a bit of a problem here. I actually do not have any cavalry on the field of battle at all, with the exception of this guy, and I believe that's Neeson himself. Yes, it is. That is Neeson himself. I'm not entirely sure why he's even on a mount at this point, but yeah. He is indeed on a mount. I'm actually thinking of telling everyone to just charge in because it seems as though most of the enemy are ranged. Uh, yeah, that's actually hilarious. Okay, let's do this. How many kills do you think I can get in this particular battle? If it's a lot, then props to you. If you think that I'm going to get a lot, then thank you very much. I appreciate that. But if you think I'm going to die instantly, then, well, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you, to be honest. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do that. I'm going to I'm going to aim for 75 kills. Let's see if I can get 75 kills. Highly unlikely, just bear that in mind, highly unlikely, but you never know. I do have a massive two-handed axe and maybe it's going to prove to be a uh, excellent companion for this wonderful slaughter that we are about to perpetrate here. Maybe. Maybe just maybe. There we go. I mean, basically just charging in, especially with Berserker-type units, is very effective, as you can quite clearly tell. So let's see if I can get more of that. Come on now. Uh, it seems like most of our people are running. Oh, nice! Most of the enemy is running away right now. Let's try and block this guy. Whoa, he's running me down. Thank you very much for that. And these guys are running across the the river. This is... Well, this is not very good for them, to be honest. I feel like if they are going to run into the river, that is... That is them basically losing every single semblance of intelligence that they would have otherwise had. Although, if they then take in their, their cavalry here, that's a, different, uh, that's a different story. Because their cavalry is coming in and doing a pretty heavy charge on us right there. 
That was pretty harsh. Maybe, maybe they sent their infantry into the river just to bait us into attacking them. That might have been the case. But this is going to very much reduce the combat strength of the Western Empire. And bear in mind that even if they are able to take back Thorios Castle, they are going to lose a lot of units in the process. And them doing that is then going to result in an even smaller garrison when we eventually return to take it back. Because don't worry, I am going to go back and take it. It is not going to be one of those times where I take something and then just leave it uh, for the rest of time. But generally, I think we, c we can actually fight the Western Empire in comparison to being able to fight the Kuzate. Because the Kuzate, <laughs> as you can see from previous episodes, they're running around with some very large armies. And it's very difficult to counter them at the best of times. So let's see if I can get a couple more kills here. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Another one, please. Thank you very much. There we are. Can we get some more? I think that's it. <laughs> that was actually kind of amazing. And we ended up losing literally eight. Yeah, that was really good. Oh, okay. That was one of our companions. Okay. Whew. Okay. I'm, I gotta say, I don't actually care that much about her dying because we didn't really get to know her that much. And generally she was not that much of an important piece in our overall plan. But, I'm just thankful that it's not going to cause any kind of problem with the game itself. Because if it, if it had been a vassal, then we might have had a crash on our hands or something like that. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that right now. Anyway, I'm just going to take all of these guys prisoner, because that's what we do. And then we're just going to take a bunch of these guys as well. And we won't rescue any of those looters, thank you very much. Okay, 28,000 experience, yeah. 28,000 experience. This is exactly what I'm talking about and why I say that roguery skill is very, very powerful when you get it to higher levels because you're going to literally have the ability to pretty much just this. I mean, look at all the experience that we just gained from that. The donation alone gave us, what, 30 or so more bear zerkers just by themselves. Pretty amazing. And as you can see, he's now left. Look at that. He has now left and stopped the siege at Thorios Castle. And you know the reason why he's done that? Because we... <laughs> we destroyed all of his reinforcements. Oh yes. Okay, and now I'm able to get in here. Fantastic. And that is what you get, Garios, for attempting to besiege this right here. Okay, anyway, I'm going to go to the dungeon real fast, and I'm going to... I'm going to, I'm going to put her into my prisoner's hold right here, and then I'm going to probably release her, to be honest. I'm, I'm thinking we might release her? I, I mean, I could execute. Can I, can I actually release her? Can I actually... Oh, not allowed to talk to us. Okay. Well, I guess that's how it goes, eh? I guess that's how it goes. Anyway, this guy is literally just waiting for us to leave right now, and I really cannot do that, unfortunately. So it seems like this will be one of those times where we basically just wait here until my garrison is a little bit more fleshed out. But what I am going to do is I'm going to dismiss Nielsen from the army, and he's just going to have to go off. Hopefully he won't get killed. So, yeah. No, that seems fine. Garios is coming back. I would be actually okay. Oh, oh, he's actually trying it. What? Join the defense. Why is he doing this? This is going to be an easy victory for us. No doubt. At least in my opinion, I think it's going to be a pretty easy victory. I don't think he's going to really be able to do much against us here. And I mean, we have some catapults. What's he building? He's building some battering rams and some siege towers, and that's basically it. We are gaining engineering skill as a result of this too, and we also leveled up our leadership skill, so that's pretty fantastic. As you can see, 
Yeah, party size increased by five for each town you control, and heroes generate shared experience. Don't really care about that too much. Security being increased in a town per day while waiting, and remove the morale penalty for recruiting prisoners of your faction. Okay, well, the prison, uh, I mean, not the prisoner, the security is pretty useful. But we are not the owner of a town. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I don't really need the party size increase. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the security. And if we do get a town at some point, this is just going to help us a great deal. So I'm thinking that that would be quite useful for us. I'm going to take some more charm skill, going to take some more in social. And then we are good. Let's take a look at our party here as well. We have 151 berserkers, if you can believe it. That's pretty crazy. Hopefully, Nielsen is going to be okay. And yeah, those guys abandoned their siege, as you might expect. So hopefully... Oh, hello there. Oh, they're actually coming back. Look at that. <laughs> I don't even know what this guy is doing right now. This guy is being uh, very, um, shall we say, strange. I wouldn't expect him to be so indecisive, considering he does lead us in terms of numbers. But I think that is basically it. So I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking right now. Because he had built a battering ram beforehand. And now we've just built up all of our catapults. What, what is he? Oh, he's building a trebuchet. No, don't build a trebuchet, sir. That is actually very bad for me. As you can see. Maybe, maybe, my, cat, maybe my catapults will be able to deal with it. Yeah, nice. That was some good damage right there, but unfortunately he is also dealing some good damage to us. And now he's building even more trebuchets. Hopefully my catapults will, will be more accurate. Please be more accurate, catapults. Yes, it seems like it does do a, a pretty significant amount of damage. But as you can see, one trebuchet accurate hit basically kills a catapult in one. So that's obviously really, really bad. But there you go. They've abandoned the siege once again. Kind of interesting, isn't it? It's kind of interesting how the AI thinks, because I have no idea why they're running away now. They have a battle or combat strength of over 600 now, and generally I would assume that they would be perfectly fine with attempting to do this. Oh, look at this. This is fantastic. Look at that. Oh, actually, no. Never mind. That's not fantastic. Hmm. Okay. Ah, wait. Settlement provides one extra catapult at the beginning of the siege. Hmm. But... Prisoner escape chance from dungeons decreased by 25%. Range siege engines is 25... Ugh. Yeah, see, now here's the thing. I don't know whether this actually applies to defensive structures. The range siege engines having a 25% less likely chance to be hit. That says to me that that's offensive, right? That's the offensive side of things. And I don't usually use those. So I'm going to go for siege works. Okay, they're doing it again for some reason. This is very strange. I I wonder why they I wonder why they're doing that. Yes, and uh, we still and we don't have the catapults. Hmm, somewhat unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, so he's building a battering ram once again. So he's allowing us to get all of our catapults up and running. If he had started building trebuchets immediately, I think we would probably be losing this right now. But he is not doing that. Very, very weird. And now he's building trebuchets once again. Nielsen is being attacked by some looters. Hopefully he's not going to get killed. Non-aggression pact with the, with the Vlandians. Yeah, sure. Thanks very much. I'm okay with that. Wow, they didn't even kill one of our catapults. Fantastic. That's really, really good. And he's abandoned it once again. What is he doing? I have no idea what he's doing right now. Okay. Um, I'm actually thinking maybe I should just put a whole bunch of units in here. Or maybe I should take all of my units out and then just go out and attack him. I mean, if at this point, I'm not entirely sure what is better. Because on the one hand, he seems to be coming back, going away, coming back, going away. Oh, there's Nielsen. Why are you... What, the, what are you doing, sir? Did you see that? Why did he do that? What an absolute idiot. He had 128 units in his army. That's max for Nielsen. And, uh, <laughs> and then he just ran straight into Garios' army. I have no idea why he decided to do that. That is... Uh, 
Why did you do that, sir? I have no idea. Oh, uh, well, never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm going to go over to Lycaron because I need to buy some food. I don't know whether you've noticed, but I actually have no food remaining. I have like four days left, so that's really, really bad. And maybe we'll be able to recruit some more people in the meantime. Now I have no one helping me because Neosun was an absolute idiot. Uh, why does he do such a thing? I have no idea. Why does he do that? Oh, well, never mind. We got another 20 days worth of food. I should probably go back to Thorios Castle right now because you never know when Garios is going to return. This was also the main reason why I decided to take a castle because if it does come down to it, us leaving the castle... Oh, there we go. It's now under siege by someone different. Well, this is interesting. <sighs> See, now, if we had another 128 units, that would give me over 400 with Neosun. Actually, not 400. That would give me an over 300 units. And I'd probably be able to tackle this without too many difficulty. Oh, no, never mind. They they gave up. <laughs> what is with the AI right now? I have no idea. But, well, whatever the case, I'm going to be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.